right. Hello, everyone. Thank you all again for joining this call and sharing your experience of your virtual volunteering um, with Project Sunshine um, as an intern with Lenovo. Um, so as you know, I'm Ariana. I'm a global comms and philanthropy intern, I'm a rising sophomore at Elon University. And so to start off, I would just love for each one of you all to go around and just state your name, your internship title, and um, the school that you could attend, and then just anything else that you'd like to share. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vaidehi Gosavi, and I'm a master's student at uh, University of Illinois, Chicago. I'm a visualization analytics intern in the global analytics and operations team at Lenovo this summer, and I'm uh, looking forward to share my experience with you all of my virtual volunteering. Hello, my name is Nancy Milliken. I am a junior at Western Michigan University, and I am a trade marketing intern this summer. I'm super excited to be able to share my experience with you guys and work with these awesome people today. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Seo Ying Fu, but uh, I go by Jaden. So I am actually from, um, I'm actually a finance major at the National University of Singapore, um, where I'm a junior in the business school. So um, right now in the Novo, I am a financial analyst intern where my job scope um, rotates between pricing, service reconciliation, as well as um, profit tracking for uh, North America DCG team. So um, that's all for my introduction. Back to you, Ariana. Nice. All right, so just to kick everything off um, with this interview, just wanted to start with, have you all engaged in virtual volunteerism before? Uh, was this your first time? Okay, I'll go first. So uh, I've been actively volunteering since my childhood, but uh, this was my first virtual volunteering experience. And I'd love to say that it was seriously great. I enjoyed designing fun activities for the kids in the hope of bringing a smile to their faces. And all thanks to you, Ariana, for hosting this and just giving us all this opportunity to volunteer virtually, which is, I think, especially very important and helpful in these trying times that we all are in. So I have engaged in virtual volunteerism before. I helped a, a nonprofit with their social media. So it was really cool to be able to have a different kind of track for virtual volunteering. And it felt really good because normally I volunteer at least once a week at my university or, on, or off campus, and I'm always involved. But part of being stuck inside due to the current global situation, I haven't been able to do that. So this was a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to give back like I love to do, even though I can't leave my apartment. So thank you, Ariana, for helping make this possible and to your team who all helped put it together because this was awesome. So for me, I used to, um, I, I'm used to doing physical volunteering back in Singapore. So in fact, this is my first time doing um, virtual volunteering. So I wanted to feel the difference in uh, virtual volunteering because in terms of that, that is a very different um, way of giving back. But at the same time, um, because of the COVID-19 situation, I think it is good to um, do a virtual volunteering where we have um, some, uh, we, where, we, where we will not um, get to meet each other physically, but at the same time being able to contribute um, in this sense to the pediatric patients as well as the frontline workers. So I'm, it, it has been a pretty uh, rewarding um, experience. So yeah, back to you, Mariana. Yeah, thank you, Jaden. Um, I know you kind of just touched on that like a little bit of um, the population that we were serving, the pediatric patients and the healthcare workers, social workers, wants to just maybe expand a little bit more on um, the impact with the work that you did, um, maybe the different activities that you all um, created for the patients. Uh, so I designed uh, two coloring pages for the kids. So one of was Star Wars, so I just thought it would be exciting for the kids to color their favorite superheroes. And another one was just a picture of a farm with a lot of animals in it. So I did put a you are a rock star message in that coloring page. So, you know, they would just feel happy and would bring a smile to their face. Like, uh, in a way, we are telling them that you're strong and you're doing great and just keep it up. And along with this, I also created a word search puzzle for them. 
and i wrote a thank you note for the frontline healthcare workers because they are like risking their lives every day for us and just so that we can stay safe so it was a simple note just expressing my gratitude and you know appreciating all the hard work they're doing for us and i think uh, like i've made a impact on them because after completing the, these activities i felt like uh, i was doing something good for them so just uh, you know doing something good for them it made me feel good and i think uh, they'll these activities would actually help them in uh, reducing stress and you know they it will help just them being more relaxed and uh, i think it would be good for them emotionally also as just knowing that someone out there is helping them and designing things for them and just knowing this would make them feel a little better and i think a little more hopeful yeah kind of building on what you just said it's all about trying to provide hope for these kids in particular and all the frontline workers and everyone that we potentially impacted by this project and i made about a dozen of different word puzzles and uh, connect the dot kind of pages and those kinds of things. I'm not the most artistic, so the fact that you made coloring pages is really awesome. So I'm sure they will absolutely love that. But I personally really enjoyed word puzzles when I was younger. So I really hope that um, the kids that I made them for will end up enjoying them as well. I just stuck to a lot of animal themes. I feel like those are just they tend to make kids happy when they see an animal or a puppy or, you know, that kind of thing. They tend to like that. So I feel like, especially in these trying times, it's really hard for the children that are there. I mean, they probably feel really alone. They have maybe one family member who can visit them, if anyone can at all. And that's a really hard spot for someone to be in, especially a kid. So I really love that we were able to give this opportunity to be able to make something custom for them because it makes the kids remember that people are thinking of them. And I think that that's really good. It made all of us feel good. We had a good time with it. It was enjoyable for us. And if it was enjoyable for us making it, imagine how fun it's going to be for them actually doing it. So so for me, I focus um, on the uh, crossword puzzle as well as um, writing the um, heartfelt messages for the frontline workers. Because at the end of the day, um, these patients, um, it will be good to engage them at the same time, not forgetting the um, frontline workers um, showing our appreciation, even though we cannot show them to our appreciation physically. But in a way, I think when they read these messages, they will feel because of the long hours that they work and um, and the minimum contact that they have with the public, I think these, these um, messages would mean a lot to them um, to encourage them to move ahead and at the same time to fight this better until we win the war um, against the virus. So. Yep, so it is pretty um, interesting. Yeah. Yes, um, so was this your first time uh, volunteering with Project Sunshine or have you had heard of Project Sunshine before? I did not know about uh, Project Sunshine before this event. So like I said that I've, uh, I strongly believe in giving back to the society. So I've been volunteering since an early age. But because of COVID and everything, our daily lives are so impacted and not being to volunteer physically is like one of the aspects. So mm -hmm. I was really excited when I, I got your mail, heard about this virtual volunteering event and uh, doing it just made me feel like I was able to make an impact in their lives. They are like in the hospital in these uh, gloomy times and not able to see their family and friends. Like Jaden said, it's so hard for them. So just uh, the feeling of doing something good was actually very good. <laughs> I agree with you completely because I also had never volunteered for Project Sunshine, but now that I have, it was really nice to be able to help them because I know helping any kind of nonprofit right now would be great and special and every nonprofit probably wants and needs helpers right now, but especially being able to help the medical field when they've been putting in such long hours and it's been hard. It's not been an easy last few months, so I feel like being able to give back to the medical community it's hard to do because we can't physically go in there to help them. So this was such a great way to feel like we were actually giving back. And I'm so glad that Project Sunshine has been able to find ways to still do their part of, you know, helping the people in the medical field, which is what they normally do, but actually be able to still impact them, even though they can't go into the hospitals. And I really admire them for coming up with alternative solutions 
and still engaging with their volunteers. And I'm really glad that we got to participate in this. Yeah, so this is actually a very meaningful initiative. So I thought um, other than showing our appreciation to these um, frontline workers, what we could potentially, I mean, what Project Sunshine, because this is also my first time um, hearing about Project Sunshine. And as I said, that it is a very meaningful initiative. So I felt that maybe moving forward from here could potentially be um, how, um, whether we could potentially interact with the frontline workers, maybe talking to them or maybe performing for them, you know, in a way it could, um, and maybe sometimes we could be, they are listening here or maybe there could be some peer buddy um, where we um, continue to keep them motivated at work or maybe sending some encouragement every now and then because every frontline worker matters, no matter um, whether you are a doctor, nurse or social worker or even taking care of your family. These are very important. Um, these are important messages, and um, we we must continue to communicate with one another in order to stay mentally healthy um, with one another. Yeah, and of course, not forgetting the patients because um, I mean, it is the the children are at the development stage of life, and um, potentially what we could look in is to um, maybe. Uh, have some activities that will bring the students together. So um, potentially we could look into um, board games where um, where um, where the children will get to play um, together online. So that that would be pretty interesting because um, rather than having them to interact um, and just saying like a one way, it could be two ways. It could be a buddy. It could be a group gaming a uh, group game. Yeah. So these are um, some initiatives I would suggest as we um, progress and uh, move on to a higher tier of virtual volunteering. Yeah, I really like that initiative. And I think that even goes back off of what Katie, the Project Sunshine representative, um, mentioned during our call of their um, their development of the teleplay that's going on right now. And um, they're still continuing to work on it, but I think it's going to be a great initiative of a way to really interact with the patients um, virtually um, through Zoom or um, WebEx or something similar. And I think it will also be really beneficial to kind of um, bring back that kind of in-person feel and mm -hmm. be able to have that personal touch and, you know, share your, um, share, have a face-to-face -face conversation essentially with um, the patients and um, their doctors and the nurse. Going off of that with impact, uh, how much of an impact did you all think that you had? Um, I know that virtual volunteering can be different than being an in-person, um, but I think uh, on personally, I think that you know, virtual volunteering can still make a, a big impact, make a, a big impact on um, the community that we are serving. So maybe just um, one of each one of you or so just go around and um, say just the impact that you thought that you were making. So I guess kind of one of the things that I really felt was when you think about virtual volunteering, like you were saying, Ariana, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're doing anything but at the same time I know that if I were a kid I would have loved to get this word you know word search made by a college kid who took time out of their day to make that for me that would have felt really cool or the frontline worker you know any kind of appreciative thing we can give to them they're gonna love that and I feel like those kinds of things they really add up especially for people who are already feeling isolated and alone. Everyone in the world's kind of feeling that way right now. We're all missing people and lacking contact. And, you know, you can you can feel that people are missing people, but that's especially true for the ones that actually can't see anyone, like the people who are sick and the health line workers. Yep. So we really have to be thankful for everything they do and the fact that we're able to give back a little bit to them. I think that just means the world. I feel like it makes it all the more impactful that we took the time to do something custom for them. And we they knew that we enjoyed doing it. It was fun for us. So it's going to be great for them. And so I guess that's kind of my feeling on how it felt to virtually volunteer right now and what kind of, I hope this starts to trend into the future. And we, all of us who did this virtual volunteering, take it forward. And whether we work with Project Sunshine or not, we either find a different nonprofit or continue with Project Sunshine or both and just find ways, small ways to make people happy in this trying time. 
So for, for me, I'm looking into, um, I think the impact is good because in a way we are living in an unprecedented time. I think everyone here is, a, and especially like um, we are, belong, be, some of us belong to uh, millennials, Gen Z. Uh, so in a way, um, we are living in uh, extraordinary times. So in a way, this um, will definitely have an impact. But then again, then we have to look into um, how we can continue to make this um, virtual volunteering um, more meaningful and make the um, people who are benefiting to have a uh, more impact. So, um, and of course, uh, as we have mentioned just now, is how we can tie in virtual volunteering and physical volunteering together. And that is technology. So potentially we could look into technology, for example, um, maybe there could be an, because right now um, what we are doing is personalizing uh, some of the things uh, some of the um, activities like puzzles or maybe um, messages to these um, people who are benefiting the patriotic patients as well as the healthcare workers. So what we could do is potentially the technology as the technology advanced, we could even personalize a plan for them, a physical plan, because in a way, um, it they could see the plan growing together with them, even though they do not interact with us. So how we can actually personalize a plan um, by sitting at home and at the same time being able to deliver to these um, people. So this is my suggestion. I feel like kind of to build on that too is even when this pandemic is over and people are returning to their normal lives, there's always going to be something that's slightly different. But I feel like even as we shift back into being able to visit people in the hospital and those kinds of things, there are still groups of people that can't have a lot of visitors. People who are immunocompromised and those kinds of things can't have a lot of outside visitors. I feel like starting this track into the virtual volunteering is going to open a whole new gateway for those people who already couldn't have a lot of people and give them more equal opportunity to be able to interact with volunteers. And I feel like this is a great opportunity. Like everyone's different skills and talents. Yeah. If we work together in a team, right. we can make a much more immersive experience for everyone. I feel like you guys both kind of touched on that. And that's that's really, you know, it's not about us, it's about them. So if we can use our skills as gifts to help them, we can work together and make something even bigger and better. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's one of the awesome two things about virtual volunteering. It's like you really can make an impact wherever you are and whatever time that you have. And um, it doesn't necessarily have to be two hours or so. You can always give with an hour or 30 minutes or so. And I think um, you still can just make such a great impact on, um, your, on the people that you're serving. And I think it will probably end up becoming the trend. Um, and I hope it does. And just, you know, encourage people to volunteer more and to really serve in their community and give back. Do any of you guys like plan to volunteer with Project Sunshine in the future or start a college chapter or maybe just, you know, join your local community chapter? Yeah, I looked it up on uh, Project Sunshine's website and it seems like my university does not have a ch chapter yet. So I was just thinking of contacting you or Katie for any further details on how can I go about starting that. And so, yeah, I would love to initiate this in my university. I feel the same way because I haven't looked up yet if they have one at my university, but if they don't, I would love to either start an organization right in the university or work with, because we have two local hospitals in my city. So work with one or both of them and Project Sunshine to even work with a group of friends to be able to do this. I have a lot of friends that work kind of in the medical field or are ingoing um, nursing students and uh, uh, occupational therapy students and those kinds of things. So I'm sure they would love an opportunity to be able to impact these hospitals, especially the ones where they're going to be studying at. So being able to engage further, I'm sure they would love that. So I'd probably already have a small team I could bring and start this with. And I would love to have the opportunity to work more with Project Sunshine because you can just do so much for, you know, so little of your time can make such an impact on somebody else's life. And that, that feels really good. Yep. So for me, I hope to continue to um, stay in contact with you and Katie, because in a way, I'm actually from Singapore. So um, virtual volunteering would be a good thing because imagine I've volunteered from the other side of the globe and I can still contribute to these, um, to the patriotic patients and um, as well as the frontline workers from the other side of the globe. So that, that would be pretty interesting. 
And of course, um, some some things that we could potentially look at is um, what type of virtual volunteering um, um, could be um, engaged. For example, um, are we able to raise funds for these um, beneficiaries for them online? So in a way, um, we could even get some physical items for them. So that could be one area that potentially we could explore as well. Yeah, I really yeah. like that idea, Jaden, that you um, mentioned of just possibly, you know, bringing some gifts in as well and um, providing um, them to the pediatric patients or even just the essential workers um, that are interacting with the patients. Uh, so as you know that I shared before, um, the Lenovo employees, um, many of them engage in the Level 31 Global Month of Service, um, and this year it will be in October, and um, as you know, it will be virtual. Project Sunshine has been one of um, their partners um, before, and so they've helped to make uh, STEM activity kits, and um, so this year they're looking at different options of ways that they can engage virtually. And so if any of you um, want to share maybe some tips or advice that you would give um, when planning a virtual and another virtual volunteer event or even engaging in virtual volunteerism um, would just be helpful if any of you want to share anything. Yeah, so, so to all the people who are going to volunteer, so just don't think that uh, just because this is virtual that you might not be able to make an impact. So don't think about that. Just, uh, you know, uh, let your creativity juices flow and just design some really nice things for them. And, uh, you know, uh, when they know that someone is just doing something for them, they'll feel very happy. So, yeah, just don't hesitate and yeah, do things. Well, if you need to look at how to plan a virtual event, I would just talk to Ariana. I think she did a great job. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I feel like people are not going to think, like you were just saying, that it's making an impact. And I would say look beyond that because it definitely does. Everything we do, it can start a chain effect. Just because we send a single message to a frontline worker, it can brighten their day and that can lead them to have a more positive impact on their patients because they were in a better mood. Or if we brighten the mood of one child, maybe it can, you know, help the other children in the same facility as them see that they're in a good mood or it can spark some conversation. It can be a chain effect, even if you do something as simple as making a crossword. It's so much more than that. And the other thing I would say is utilize your skills. All of you are here, you're professionals, you have talents, you're all incredible. So use them. Do being virtual gives you the opportunity to, you're not stuck doing something you don't necessarily know how to do. I mean, even with the virtual opportunity, I'm not artistic. I'm pretty certain I clarified that. So I didn't make the, you know, drawings and stuff like that, but other people are. And that's amazing. So use what skills you have and what talents you have and what's going to be fun for you. Because if you have fun doing it, and you can use your talents and skills and passions, the projects are gonna turn out incredible and the kids or the frontline workers or whoever you're benefiting is going to appreciate it and it's gonna make all the difference. So for virtual volunteering, I think when we move on to the next stage of virtual volunteering, we could have activities that are short and long. So in a way, um, it can cater to people who really, uh, who wants to contribute more. For example, the board game. So because that really requires more time and effort um, for a group project to come in. So that could be um, a longer project. And people who, who are keen in shorter projects, then perhaps um, they can volunteer on a weekly basis. So for example, um, this week we could touch on uh, heartfelt messages. Then maybe next week would be um, designing a crossword. So in a way, we constantly engage with um, these beneficiaries. So in a way, I think volunteering has no um, commitment as long as you have the heart and mind um, you can contribute in a small or big way or potentially um, and as and when things are getting better, you can be on the ground um, contributing to physical volunteering, getting to meet people face to face because some people actually prefer the human touch rather than a very weird kind of um, virtual touch. So that could be um, something that I would um, love to share with um, people who are really keen to volunteer, which is basically to have the heart and mind and basically expect nothing but giving your all. I think kind of the build on that too is 
do that with your coworkers and the people around you. You don't have to just stick to the couple people you know. If you've heard of someone who's a really great artist and you also really like art and you want to partner with them to create something, reach out to them. This is a perfect opportunity to, to get to know more of your coworkers and what their passions and skills are. Talk amongst each other. Share your ideas. Your idea could spark someone else, or maybe you could work together on a project which they hadn't thought about, but you were lacking the skill, a certain skill set that somebody else had. Or maybe people just enjoy something and want to help the same people accomplish something similar. Talk to each other. Reach out. This is a great opportunity for you guys to connect. Not only will it be benefiting the people, but it will be benefiting you, and maybe you can make some new friends out of it. And like that sounds cheesy and cliche, but it's true. You might really enjoy the experience and figure out some people that you really want to connect with. I would say take the opportunity to get to know everyone around you and, you know, find out the hidden secrets about people. Is somebody secretly really artistic? You know, that's kind of cool to know. And of course, um, to add on to uh, Madison's point is um, volunteer. I mean, in a way, you can learn from one another, not, not just learning from your coworkers. You also learn from patients because... You could learn the patience of um, um, you can learn the virtue of patience, um, in speaking to them. Um, you could learn um something that you don't realize that you don't actually have. So it's something that equips you and helps you holistically. And at the same time, you can also um give your inputs um to help the team make it better, a better experience for the um organizing team, and also for the people who are benefiting. So put yourself in their shoes so that you will be able to deliver the best outcome. Yes, um, that's, all the, that's all the questions that I have on my side. Um, thank you all again for getting on and just sharing your experience of virtual volunteering. I'm so glad that you all participated. Um, it was great to see um, this event turn out to be such an successful event. So again, thank you all. Um, it was great to discuss um, your experience with virtual volunteerism. And um, that wraps up the uh, interview for today. So yes, thank you for giving us the opportunity to connect with one another. Well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to the part two of virtual volunteering. So am I. <laughs>